I'm going to show you how you can give your Android a full-on Material 3 expressive makeover. And I'm not just talking about the usual easy spots. We're going to get this fun new design into areas you may not even get an official update for. Now, in case you haven't heard, Material 3 Expressive is Google's new design language that just rolled out with Android 16. Think bigger buttons, funkier shapes, bouncier animations, just a whole new UI that's way more colorful, fun, and well, expressive. And we're finally starting to see these redesigns roll out. If you're not on a Pixel, you're most likely only seeing these new looks within some Google apps like Gmail, the Clock app, Calculator, and a few others, but there are still plenty of places where we can push it even further. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. Oh, and make sure to stick around to the end because I saved the absolute best material expressive feature that you can get on any Android for last. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on that one. And hey, if you end up using any of these tricks in this video, a quick thumbs up goes a long way since nobody else on YouTube or really the entire internet has compiled a list just like this. So thanks guys. All right, first up, Google has made almost every basic app that you can possibly think of except a proper offline music player. I mean, they used to have Google Play Music, but they discontinued that. And now you're basically stuck with YouTube Music, which is fine, but here's the catch. If you wanna play your own offline songs, you can only upload them from your computer. You can't just do it straight from your phone, which is a bit of a hassle. Plus the UI doesn't look that great either. That's why I started using this newly released app called Pixel Play. It's completely free and open source, and it's an offline music player that nails the Material 3 expressive design. Honestly, it looks so good, you think Google themselves made it. It automatically scans your phone for audio files, lets you pick which folders to pull them from, and then the homepage even mixes your songs into a super fun, colorful layout. You've also got your search page, a library tab with all your songs and albums, but the real highlight is the Now Playing page. It has that squiggly progress bar, bouncy buttons that even change shapes when you tap on them, and clean animations everywhere. It even supports lyrics too. It's just a perfect optimized music player that feels like the app that we never really got from Google. And speaking of audio, how about that new volume interface? On Pixel phones, the volume panel got an expressive redesign. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's kind of huge and takes up more space. But hey, if you want that same look on your phone, there's an app called Precise Volume 2.0. All you gotta do is go into the settings, enable the volume button override option, and now, whenever you press your volume keys, you'll get that same pixel style volume bar with the expanded view as well. It even throws in a new equalizer button and lets you have volume presets too. It works and looks just like the one found on the latest pixel devices. You can even switch the look to match older versions of Android if you want to. Just a heads up though, the developer did lock this specific feature behind a paywall of a few bucks, which is a bit of a bummer, but if you really want that pixel look, now you can have it. Oh, and before I forget, some of you may not know this, but I've actually started a new monthly series called Best Useful Tech of the Month, where I highlight cheap but generally useful gadgets. In the last episode, for example, I showed off a waterproof station that lets you use your phone in the shower. Then there's a super fancy phone case with a screen on the back and a really powerful modern looking charging hub with retractable cables. And that's just a taste. I showed off so many more awesome tech. I'll leave the video series playlist in the card so that you can watch it after finishing this video. Plus, the third episode is coming out at the beginning of next month, so make sure you subscribe with the bell turned on so that you don't miss it. All right, the next big thing that I really love about this material expressive design is all the funky abstract shapes that Google's made. There's 35 of them, and while Google mostly just uses them for buttons and little UI elements within apps, I feel like they totally missed the chance to also use them for home screen icons. But don't worry, I found a way to actually do it for every icon, even on the Pixel Launcher, which doesn't even support third-party icon packs. All you need is this app called Pix Material Expressive Icons. Once you've got it, just head into your widgets panel, find this icon widget, and then drop it onto your home screen. From there, pick any app you'd like, choose one of the new expressive shapes, there's plenty to choose from, resize it if you want to, and then hit apply. Once you do that, Boom, you've got expressive style icons right on your home screen. Plus the best part is that they automatically match your phone's color theme and switches between lights and dark mode too. You can even make some icons bigger than others if you'd like. And the icon pack even supports close to 24,000 icons. So it should theme pretty much everything you've got installed. 
It's a seriously slick little workaround. It just won't let you put the icons inside folders because these are really just one by one widgets. And it does cost $1.49, but honestly, it's worth it since no one else really has this done. Or if you're part of my Patreon, you can grab it for free since the developer hooked me up with 100 promo codes. So there you go. Here's a quick one. Chrome also got some material expressive love. It's got stronger mono theming, rounded elements, and just looks a lot cleaner overall, but you can actually push it even further. If you head into the Chrome flags and enable this one that's titled Android Tab Groups Color Update, it lets you color code your tab groups. It's a small change, but it really makes the whole UI look way more fun. I've been loving it. Plus a fun little bonus too, is that if you long press the status bar, you can now move it to the bottom of the screen for easier use with one hand. Super handy. Another way that I brought my phone closer to that material expressive look was by using a file manager that supports this new design. Don't get me wrong, files by Google works just fine for the basics, but if you need to do more advanced stuff like unzipping RAR files or accessing system folders if you have root, you need something more powerful. My go-to for years has been Solid Explorer File Manager. Not only can it do all that, but it's also basically the only file manager that got a full material expressive makeover. It's got the new icons, mono theming, floating menus, the whole nine yards. My absolute favorite feature has got to be the dual panel view, which is a lifesaver for moving files between folders. It's been around for a while, but I still love it. It just looks and feels so clean now too overall. And then of course, you've got all the pixel only apps that you can't really get anywhere else. Stuff like Pixel Screenshots, which organizes your screenshots and makes them searchable. Pixel Weather, which is a gorgeous weather app. And the Recorder app, which records your voice and transcribes your conversations. Well, the good news is that there are a few loopholes to actually obtain all of these. Starting with the Pixel Weather app, that's the easiest one to grab. You can just get the latest version from APK Mirror and it'll run on most Android phones without a problem. The only thing missing is the AI Weather Report Summary feature, but otherwise it's the same app. The Pixel Screenshots app is a bit trickier. You can't get the same exact version, but there is a free and open source app called Shot Studio that does the same exact thing with the same looking interface. It even provides some extra useful features. Not only can it create collections, but it even uses Gemini AI to auto categorize screenshots. For example, I made a gift ideas collection tab, turned on smart categorization, and it went through my old screenshots and pulled out Amazon products and website clippings neatly into that folder. It even makes screenshots searchable and allows you to pull text from images. Pretty great. As for the Google Recorder app, that one's actually the toughest to bring over, but there is a way, kind of. You see, if you download this older 1.0.27 version of APK Mirror, there is a huge possibility that it could work on your non-Pixel phone. I mean, it's working just fine on my Galaxy, recording and transcribing everything really well. Now, that's not to say that it'll work flawlessly on every device out there, but so far, pretty much most of my devices has this working. Plus, I know this is an ancient version, but surprisingly, it still has most of the same features. The only thing missing is that it's not themed with the new Material 3 Expressive design, and it won't connect to your Google account to back up your recordings to the cloud, but that actually may be a plus if you look at it from a security standpoint. Google also made a bunch of powerful wallpaper tools that only work on the pixels. I mean, they've got live effects, which lets you wrap shapes around the subject of any picture and add weather effects too. They have Emoji Workshop too for custom emoji wallpapers. Or my personal favorite, AI Wallpaper, which gives you a plethora of ways to generate different types of backgrounds. Well, you can actually replicate some of these wallpaper features on non-Pixel phones too. The only one that I couldn't replicate though is Live Effects. It's just still too new. For AI wallpapers though, just download the OG Google Wallpapers app from the Play Store. Then you can grab this older 1.0 version of AI wallpapers from APK Mirror. Even though it's a couple years old, it still works too. Then open up the Google Wallpapers app, go to the Live Wallpaper section, select AI Wallpaper, Tap the gear icon and you'll be able to generate new wallpapers with Google's AI. You can pick themes, colors, categories, everything. The only catch is that you can't set them directly as your wallpaper, but you can preview them by long pressing on the screen and then snapping a screenshot to use as your background. Works somewhat well and generates stuff without a problem. 
As for the Emoji Wallpapers feature, for some devices, you can also get this fully working by downloading Emoji Workshop Wallpaper off APK Mirror. Even better, its current latest version on that site even works on most devices too. Once installed within the Live Wallpaper section of the Google Wallpapers app, you can then choose Your Emoji Wallpaper, then tap on the gear icon, and you can start customizing away. The only thing is that each time you change something, you'll have to tap on the check mark above to preview your changes. It doesn't update in real time like on the pixels. But still, once it's applied, the wallpaper works the same exact way and even lets the emojis move around when you tap on the screen. Again, device compatibility may vary. Just because it worked on my end doesn't mean that it'll work for everyone. Now, before moving on, the other day I was really in the mood to watch a funny show and I was scrolling through Netflix thinking, I gotta watch The Office. But of course, I remembered it's not available on Netflix anymore here in the US. So here's what I did. I fired up Surfshark, the sponsor of this video, changed my virtual location to the UK with a single click, and then I refreshed the page and boom, just like that, The Office popped up so that I could watch it without a problem. I even found a bunch of other shows that are usually restricted here, like Rick and Morty and Friends. And that's just one of the ways that Surfshark has made my life way easier. It's been my go-to VPN for years, because not only is it the most affordable one that I've found that just keeps me safe from all kinds of online attacks, but it also does other really useful things. Like it lets me see if any of my personal info, like my credit card, ID, or email has been leaked online from some old website that I signed up for in the past that ended up getting hacked. It even sends me alerts if something does get leaked. Plus, it also makes shopping online a lot better too. Believe it or not, some websites will actually charge you more based on your location. So just by switching my location with Surfshark, I can sometimes even find better deals. Plus, if a site asks for an email or a phone number to get a discount, Surfshark has a feature called Alternative ID, which lets me instantly generate a fake one to use, so I don't get spammed. So yeah, if you want to make your online life easier, safer, and cheaper, go to surfshark.com slash htm and make sure you use the code htm at checkout to get an extra four months for free. Honestly, it's a steal. Don't sleep on it. Anyway, my favorite Google app that also got a glow up and you can't really get on any non-Pixel phone is the Pixel Launcher itself. On the Google Pixel 10, it just feels so clean and feels so smooth now. Google added a bunch of nice little additions too over time, like you can quickly switch between your recent wallpapers, get some widget suggestions based on the apps that you use the most, app suggestions right on the dock, and of course, private space inside the app drawer, which basically creates a separate secure area for your sensitive stuff. It's all just great to have. Now, even though you can't get the same exact launcher, you can get something incredibly close. I'm talking about Launcher 15 Beta. That's right, the Launcher team, who've been making near-perfect Pixel Launcher replicas for years, just dropped their biggest update yet. It brings over most of the same latest Pixel Launcher features from Android 15. It's still in Beta 1 right now, but even then, it still has a ton of new incredible stuff. You get the same wallpaper carousel feature, support for the private space if you're on a Pixel, the option to put widgets in the dock, a new app drawer layout called Caddy that automatically sorts all your apps into smart folders, and a lot more. Plus, if you're rooted, Quick Switch is supported again on Android 15, and you can even pause apps right from the launcher too. So yeah, if you're looking for the closest thing to the current modern Pixel launcher, especially if you're coming from Nova Launcher, which unfortunately is losing support, then Launch Hair 15 is your best bet. I will warn you though, this is a first beta, so there are a good amount of bugs and you might see some weird glitches, so just keep that in mind. Now that we've got icons and the launcher themed, it's only right that we give your widgets some love too. Google has even redesigned a bunch of theirs, like the Google Drive app, which even changes entire looks when you resize it. It's really satisfying to look at. You've also got new Gemini widgets, Play Store widgets, weather, and they all look fantastic. But if you wanna go beyond Google's own set, there are some really fantastic custom options out there. The first is from our team who actually put together a whole new pack of material expressive style widgets that we just released a few days ago. They're found inside the How To Personalize app, which can't be found on our Patreon. And I know it sounds a little cocky that we're promoting our own app, but we really put a lot of effort into making them unique. I mean, they all match Google's Monet theming, are interactive, obviously follow the material expressive design, are really customizable, and even include some widgets you probably didn't even realize that you would need. 
Like we got a nice replacement for the at a glance widget with a clean daily view of the date, weather, and an analog clock. We also have a very creative habit tracking widget that makes it super easy to track anything. There's a fresh take on a step counter and health widget that shows your activity for the week with stats. A music player with that cool squiggly line and a lot more. Plus they all fit perfectly with Google's own widgets and your new icons. We even have a bunch of beautiful material expressive wallpapers that go great with them too. You can find all of this on our Patreon link down below and we update the app with new widgets and walls all the time. Now, if you're looking for an alternative, I'd highly recommend Material U Widgets. It costs a dollar to download, but the big plus here is that you don't even need the KWGT app for these. You just drop them right onto your home screen and they instantly work, matching your wallpaper and theme automatically. Plus they have a ton of options to choose from, batteries, calendars, clocks, weather, music players, and even some wild ones like games, AI shortcuts, screen time, and quick settings. The only downside is that most of them are two by two sizes and when you resize them, they don't always scale properly and can look a little weird at bigger sizes. It's not all of them, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, here's one of the most underrated parts of the Android OS that Google hasn't updated in a while, the APK installer menu. I mean, they probably haven't touched it too because they're actually planning to restrict sideloading from unverified developers by 2026, which is pretty lame to be honest. But until then, I highly recommend you use Installer X Revived. It replaces that boring default installer with something way better. Anytime you install an app outside the Play Store, you get so much more control. The menu itself looks a million times cleaner, showing you the version you're upgrading to, giving you the option to auto-delete the APK after install, and even showing you SDK info. Plus, if you're dealing with a split APK, you don't have to rely on an annoying app like APK Mirror Installer that forces you to watch a full screen ad every single time. Installer X handles all of it automatically and even lets you select different installation packages too. And that's just the beginning. Inside the app, you can set it to automatically grant all permissions on install, bypass Android's rule that blocks installing older app versions, allow downgrades, and automatically allow restricted settings so you don't have to use your fingerprint in the app info page every time. It works incredibly well. It does require an app called Shizuku to run, or you can use root access if you have it. If you're not sure how to set up Shizuku, don't worry, I'll link a quick tutorial in the cards to a short I made that shows you how to get it running super fast. Anyway, tap on this playlist to check out my new best tech series, or tap on this one to learn about how you can get every single exclusive feature from almost any OS skin onto your Android. If I helped you theme even one thing in this entire video, all I ask is that if you can please just drop a thumbs up. Thanks for sticking around to the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!